I'd like to introduce you all to a new artwork that I have. Not this one, but it is based on this School of Athens by Raphael in the Stanza della Segnatura in the Papal Library when Raphael was commissioned in around 1509, 1511, I think he completed it. But he was commissioned to uh, decorate the papal apartments. And so this was one of them. He did uh, Schools of Athens, Parnassus, Poetry, Theology, Disputa, and Law Justice. He did walls representing all those things. And this is his basically representing the awesome educations with Plato and Aristotle in the middle. And uh, Plato pointing up and Aristotle kind of going with the sciences and dealing with uh, reality and different things like that while Plato dealt with the metaphysical and the people on his side as well. And it forms like an awesome kind of almost ellipse if you uh, if you see it of, of people that's just kind of uh, awesome in the circles almost complete and it's just a great artwork legendary and I loved it I want to honor it and so I created this and I'm calling it School of Tartaria because uh, it incorporates a few different things into it and I'll leave some of it up for interpretation but I'll give a little exploration of what it's like and the shadows there's not many shadows because in the center is the rainbow being and so it's kind of all about uh, some of my ideas a lot of subconscious as well but a lot of my ideas about education and what I think is important for uh, children to know and just and things towards enlightenment and what I imagine Tartaria and you know Tartaria could be they could be good they could be evil but either way to me it represents kind of the mysterious ancient people that uh, were lost in due time and built some amazing things and I really um, and they probably knew had a great knowledge and can't even imagine their spirituality and, and whatnot considering that of the Tibetans and Hindus around the times that they were so it's just kind of uh, take it for what it will it's not really uh, whatever you know what I mean so in the center the rainbow being is basically gaining enlightenment while all others are kind of headed there and I incorporated animals in mind because I feel like that is very important and uh, the original is actually a little bit brighter. I have the toughest time rep being able to digitize artwork and keeping the same power and all the vast colors of the originals. But you get the idea, this still looks pretty great. And um, so all these different patterns leading up, I love how even in the original he uses the old Tartarian kind of North Polar Admiral Bird, each swastika, ancient Hindu Jainism symbol and on the uh, pattern of the arch and I almost wanted to make mine as well be incorporated a little bit more and so I went up to the space realm with the North Star Lotus being in the center and there's kind of like a comet life spiral emerging from one side while the angel reflects the light on the other the divine light in the distance there's a pyramid there's also a Tartarian esque tower with water coming from it maybe it's an energy source the wind blowing those kind of the babies the ancient angels blowing the wind, spreading more light on the two, the Adam and Eve basically swimming around in the ether above the dome, the dolphin, the lotus, the pelican, the obelisk in the distance gaining power, the, all this stuff. The monkeys, the Tartarian emblem on, the, on one of the flags is, or that bird is seen often in it, the griffin or whatever you'd want to call it sun, different Tartarian landscapes in the background, and then the bottom right is this guy that I consider to be like almost kind of like the Tartarian of the artwork, like the, one of the main ones. He's holding Metatron's cube, and then there's the real Tartarian symbol right down there, that kind of uh, beaked, dragony, winged creature. All kinds of different flowers, there's different gradients of age groups of children that are playing learning different things, learning different metaphysical things, sacred geometries, nature, natural patterns, just all different kinds of inspiration while being with these older teachers and people that are all dedicated to learning. Then this guy goes on his path at the beginning of the age, this kind of neutral figure, the angel to the left, the tiger protecting, it's all different kinds of things. I incorporated into the, uh, the bottoms of the pillars, there's kind of like reality mixed with the uh, decorations and uh, there's all different things to see here people discovering things people of all different races all different cultures all different styles and wisdom levels all just seeking enlightenment seeking the ability to gain that rainbow body whatever it takes to make that happen and uh, now it is very important that people in the education system evolves to be more renaissance like and less of the uh, just terrible social order 
chaos, just <laughs> the insanity that it's become, where it was a propaganda vessel for the wrong people. It needs to free up and really, you know, gu guide the next generations towards enlightenment, towards different things that really cr foster their imaginations, foster the uh, the way the ancients kind of thought and that reality that's really connected with nature in a way. And, you know, we should have more rooms in different places and people should be more focused on having great artworks and, and getting them out there and supporting artists to make amazing things because this is like, this is timeless stuff here. And there's a really cool mystery behind it I'll share in a little bit. But even look at the floor of this place. That is an intense floor. Like it really seems like art and symmetric, symmetry and whatnot had a certain connection back in time where if you were engulfed in it, and I know what this feels like as well because I've experimented with it before, but being engulfed in art is almost like in meditating on it in, in your own way is, a, uh, is an incredible thing. And I really think that they utilize that very much in the distant past. And this is one thing I noticed too. Look at the ground here. Look at the floor. This is the U.S. Supreme Court building where those frontline doctors spoke recently. But look at the floor pattern. It is pretty much the same as in the School of Athens. And I don't know what it is. I tried to research it all over the place. I can't find anything that even mentions the importance or symbolism of the floor pattern, that square within a square. I know it's good for showing perspective, but other than that, I don't know what the total symbology of it is. Maybe it's an ancient symbol that comes from somewhere, Tartaria maybe. But the fact that it was uh, synchronicitous and I discovered this connection between this space where the frontline doctors spoke and School of Athens, which I had just completed that day and gotten scanned. And so these drawings take me several months to do and months even to think about. So having those both dates coincide at the same time was an amazing synchronicity. I love when things like that happen and they do all the time when you're receptive to them. But sometimes there's ones of a certain magnitude and this was pretty cool. So if anyone has any insight on what that pattern might mean, that would be great. Definitely share it. You know, 1511, Raphael painted that, and then this was supposedly completed in the 1930s, and the, um, the apotheosis on the top was supposedly done in the 1930s too, but it looks very ancient, and they always say that they're inspired by ancient like uh, things, but it's kind of like that thing with the moon, where oh, yeah, why don't we build buildings like this now in the time where we can see them and document the full construction of them. I couldn't find any construction videos of, of really any of these uh, any of the aspects of this building so there's always a little bit of doubt you know I don't like to totally believe everything that they tell about every date that things were built because uh, I believe they can lie very easily just by switching numbers but the artwork in there is amazing that sculptural case of capability is incredible this the message of that artwork is actually amazing to definitely read into more detail some of those descriptions I posted and even the background that rotunda and awesome dome in the background like wow wow like I would love to see an architect in our time now in the 20 in the 2000s build something of even close to this and I would like to see how much effort it takes and how it, just how it works and here are some other sections of the um, the papal apartments that Raphael designed and they all go together in amazing harmony and I'd actually like to do the uh, Parnassus one because that's very interesting and if you've ever seen that movie the imagination of Dr. Parnassus also very symbolic about the everything from the tarot to the way celebrities and charities corrupt ones work their negative associations with children the poetry the essence of the universe it's a pretty good movie I love Terry Gilliam's movies so check that out if you can but this art incredible I, uh, definitely inspiring me to do more and dig a little deeper into Raphael and uh, I love the ceiling and they, they really these rooms are like almost like portals they're divine celebrations and you know what can you do besides just go in and appreciate it like there's I think definitely an altered state that can be gathered from these being surrounded by perfection being surrounded by ar architectural uh, visual illusionary like perfection the symmetry that in a lot of these things, the surrounding with full colors, the full engulfment in art, really creates a um, an amazing force that I think they really embraced back in the day, and they really truly appreciated. And if we uh, all remain quarantined for the rest of our lives, and schools don't even come into session anymore, then uh, this is going to have to. Uh, people are going to have to really a lot of negative detriments will happen. And there's a big debate about opening schools, and I think schools need to be a little bit re, uh, revamped, because I can see that I, I used to be a teacher, I was almost 
Um, I was always uh, I was a high school teacher for three years. I taught in, uh, as, as an assistant. I did so I've done so much teaching, and I'm, but I'm glad I never got my degree in teaching. I always taught at private schools and other things, but because what is happening now is going to be a disaster for a lot of people. The education system is flipped on its head, and you get a lot of of opinions going in different directions and it's not going to work. The only solution is to go back to the way it was and that's not going to work either because that wasn't that good. So they need a re-envisioning and incorporating nature into it, getting rid of the strict regulation of, uh, of, time, of having a strict time every day in a schedule where it makes you feel. I remember when I was young and I first found out that I, when I was like really young and I was, they're like, I was like, how much longer do I have to go to school? And the, someone, I think my sister was like, ha ha, you got like 12 years left. Or like, and then even more after college. And I was like, no. I remember being devastated as a young kid when I found that out. However, if someone explained to me, hey, you know, life is learning. You're going to learn the rest of your entire life. Every second is you are in school but you don't have to be forced to sit and be and be quiet and do all these different things that you're forced to do and institutionalized. You don't have to do that. You can go outside and learn. You can learn with your neighbor. You can learn by working with someone. You can learn by going to a field, going to a farm, going to a sanctuary, going to anywhere and really experiencing it and learning it. And you can pick up a book. We can go to the library. We can explore this topic today. We can explore this topic tomorrow. Like, oh, you want to you, you want to find out more more about that you have all these questions let's find out these things on our own let's take a microscope let's take a telescope binoculars let's go for a walk in the woods and discover that is the future of education is incorporating all these different things and making learning fun and making learning people's and children future realize that life is a learning experience we are all in school always with the goal being to learn as much as possible and live a happy productive spiritually enlightening awesome life being good to everyone and just being awesome and that's what it should all be taught money should not be valued as much as the end goal there is so much more importance than by getting your head and your body and your mind in check and really embracing the infinite potential of being alive as a human in this miracle body just getting ready prepping for enlightenment and what comes next bless you all i love everyone